Dr. Wesley Muhammad, everybody. Clap it up for Dr. Wesley Muhammad of the Nation of Islam. Peace to you, God. Or true Islam, Peace, also, I should say, as, as he's also known. Peace, Allah. Amongst the gods in the earth. Peace, God. Peace, Lord. So, yeah, we were here building, and, and in the interest of time, we just going to jump right into it. Uh, we here talking about, you know, um, Paul Guthrie and the Get on the Wheel series, and, and we're talking about W.D. Farrard, and we're talking about the devil, and where, you know, getting ran from the root of civilization to the caves of West Asia. And Okay, so now we want to talk about real quick maybe that 9,000 miles um, you know, why didn't their own people come get them? Well, you know, well, why didn't they go back to their own? Because they couldn't swim 9,000 miles. You understand? <laughs> what about the 9,000 miles? What about where their own people didn't know they were over here until approximately 60 years ago? He said that correlates with a book called Slavery, which arrived in India at a certain time. Um, I saw that. Yeah, these are these are just mathematical things that I, I, I just would like to touch on. But we could touch on that 9,000 real quick. And I definitely want to touch on the, the points that you want to get to, too. So let's yeah. let's touch on that 9,000 real quick. The problem is that. So I saw his video where with the globe, he identified 9,000 miles from the North America and India. I don't have a problem with that calculation. I, I'm going to say more about that. But the problem is he misrepresents the 9,000 miles. The 9,000 miles is not identified in here, excuse me, with the root of civilization. The 9,000 miles are in the 1 through 36. They cannot swim the 9,000 miles. So the identification of the 9,000 miles with a root of civilization is not made in the lesson where the 9,000 miles appear. That's a, a critical point, because I said in my opening, he misrepresents the supreme wisdom of the nation of Islam. And we who parrot him uncritically, we don't even refer to the sources, so we are guilty of misrepresenting as well. So that 9,000 miles is not identified in the supreme wisdom with the distance associated with the root of civilization. It is not. Now, I don't have a problem with any measurement connecting us to India. Let me say this. I said there are some redeeming qualities of his presentation. I said I to him, I said to him in private, and I am saying publicly that there is not the statement W.D. Farad came from India. There is nothing offensive about that statement to me at all. He says, and he uses the language very carefully. I'm going to talk about that. He says, W.D. Fard spoke Indian English. The reason he did so is that he came from India. Now, um, there is absolutely nothing offensive in that statement to me. It is very possible that when he came, he, Master Farad Muhammad, came to America, that he did come from India. Now, in our discussion, my discussion with Mr. Paul Guthrie, and it was a private discussion, and I posted it publicly, he came on the post and did not deny it, I pointed out Mr. Paul Guthrie admitted, notice Lord Jamal, you never hear Mr. Paul Guthrie say W.D. Farad was born in India. He never says that because he doesn't make that claim. 
but he knows the language he uses. He came from India and I challenged him. You know the people, when they hear you say he came from India, they think you're saying he was born in India, but you are not saying he was born in India. Why do you not disabuse the people of that incorrect implication? To this day, he has never disabused the people, but let's be real clear. Mr. Paul Guthrie has never said that Master Far Muhammad was born in India because he knows he cannot in any way, shape, or form make a case that Master Far Muhammad was born in India. He says that W.D. Farad came from India. And I have no reason to object to that at all. In fact, we know that he was in India. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the Savior traveled to every inhabited place on the planet and he specifically identified India and Pakistan as areas where he traveled. It is very conceivable to me that between the years 1910 when W.D. Farad first entered the United States of America to the time 1930 where he publicly revealed himself during those 20 years he was in and out of the country it is very conceivable that a good portion of that time was spent in India it was it is very conceivable to me that Master Far Muhammad's time spent in India was spent honing his craft. And so when you see Indian influences in his way, that is very mathematical to me. It's very understandable. So there is nothing objectionable about the claim as it is. He came from India to America. That is very possible. But he never said, because he knows he cannot demonstrate in any way, shape, or form that Master Far Muhammad was born in India. He offers no proof of that because he doesn't even say that. Because he said to uh, me that that's not the claim that he's making. That he's making. Well, let me just say this. No one can really make an assertion where he was from. Except the person who was born. Except the person that was born, and sometimes they can't make an assertion. They'll, they, you know, how many of us really remember when we were born? You see what I'm saying? So we, we taken the word of somebody. Um, yeah. All I'm saying is, I'll be real clear, brother Lord Jamal. If I ask you right now where you were born, whatever answer you gave me, I will have no warrant to doubt your self-identification. True. This is true. Um, okay, so what was I just going to say? Go ahead, say your question, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll think of what I was about to say. Um, so, Dr. Muhammad, as a, as, a, um, as a professor of religious studies, now, I know absolute zero about Buddhism. Do you see any similarities within... Uh, within islam and buddhism to are, are they comparable in any way to where maybe there's a, you know a word twist here or there could be uh great you know, and also interpreted. real quick and now i remember what i want to say also you said you don't take offense to him saying that he could have come through india what exactly do you Take offense. That is the that those are that the he's proposing. those he's two like, questions. What is being questions. said? That's that's disrespectful. Absolutely. I don't use that term. I don't. I, I don't. I don't feel any disrespect. He don't. He's not disrespectful. He's just wrong. You know, they're two different things. It's academic. The disrespect. I don't to offer an idea um, controversial isn't disrespect to me. I'm a. I'm a. Uh, a heretic. I stay among the heretics. So the issue is not that he advanced something disrespectful, it's just that his advancements are wrong. So you both asked the important question, Sister Rodica. Rodica, that's where I wanted to go. That's exactly where I wanted to go. 
Buddhism. Now, I'm holding my books up not as a plug, but to make a point. Every single subject we're discuss discussing, I have produced a body of scholarship on the subject to be vetted. I am saying that Mr. Paul Guthrie, I said it and I'm going to say it again, I'm not throwing shade. I'm making an academic point that I'm going to demonstrate that Mr. Paul Guthrie is not qualified as a student of Buddhism to make the claims that he's making. He is not qualified as a student of Islam to make the claims that he is making. And this is why he is so awfully wrong in both claims. So I would like to demonstrate that to the point of your question, Sister Rod Digger. He, he says that he asked the question, did Master Far Muhammad teach Islam or did he teach Buddhism? He answers, what Master Far Muhammad actually taught is Buddhism. He says, his principles are 100% Buddhist. He says that the teachings of Master Far Muhammad only line up with Buddhism. Now, this is where he is wrong. But to answer your question, this, this book right here, Religion of the Black God, Indic Sacred Science in Islam. I demonstrate, dear sister, that in this book, the book of God, an encyclopedia of proof that the black man is God, what I demonstrate is that in ancient India, in ancient Mesopotamia, in ancient Egypt, in ancient Arabia, and in ancient black Africa. All of them are branches, spiritual branches and physical branches of a central culture, civilization, and religion. And as a result of that, all of them have commonalities in them. And that includes this whole book documents that Islam, as taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the sacred science of the black God. That's what this Islam is. The sacred science of the black God. Ancient India is a home of the sacred science of the black God. I demonstrate, I'm going to say this, Buddhism is an articulation of the sacred science of the black God. So absolutely, I demonstrate that you find it's what we call the common theology of the ancient Near East. The ancient Near East, the ancient area had a common theology because they are all branches of a central civilization which was in Arabia. The Indus Valley now, civilization is a child of Arabia, not the other way around. Other way around. Well, I was going to say, don't most cultures and religions have some sort of cross-pollinization going on? Like, what's so terrible about, like, if we if we identify some of that? Like, let's just say, let's just there was nothing terrible. Let's just say, let's just say, Farrar did mix a little Buddhism with Islam. Like, would that be a bad thing? Like, for me, <laughs> great things have come out of this. So, for me, it doesn't really matter. For me personally, if he came me, from yeah. India, if he came from me, Mecca, if, just go if, if he had nuanced teachings that that may have, um, you know, had a little bit of Jainism when we talk about the 24 scientists and things of that nature. Um, there's, there, there could be a lot of different influences that we have to come up with something new. Um, I was always taught that the Islam that we were learning here was specifically tailored for the black man of North America. And this is why it w it didn't resemble Orthodox Islam. So, I mean, I'm just wondering about that. Like, is that, would that yeah, be but so that wasn't I told you that wasn't correct in telling you that. And that's what okay. my work, who, who told you that this Islam was specifically tailored 
for the black man and woman in America, as if to say that it has no global context, that was a wrong teaching given to you. But I would like to... I don't know if they were trying to say it didn't have a global context, but I think the way I was taught, and, and maybe... Maybe I was taught wrong, you know, we, we, we're not taught by perfect people. But the way I was taught was that this knowledge and this actually with people in the Nation of Islam that were telling me this at this time. Uh, that, it's really wrong. That this, <laughs> the, that this knowledge was basically tailored for the specific condition that the black man in America specifically went through. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so this is why it, it was given to us the way it was given. It's that and clarified that. Absolutely. It Absolutely. is the case that the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad were presented to the so-called Negro in America in a way that specific is a specific prescription for us. The okay. way that it was say. presented, the life that is a part of the teaching was specifically, you say tailored, I say prescribed for the peculiar condition of the black man and woman of America. That's different from what I'm saying. The, the teaching of the black God, for example, that Master Far Muhammad taught his student, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, he did not innovate that truth of God. He did not create from whole cloth a teaching to give to the black man and woman in America to have some effect. That specific black God theology that Master Farad Muhammad taught to us here in America, it has a global context and that's what I as an historian of religion have been documenting and that's why I said to your wonderful question, Sister Rodiga, Buddhism is a religion of the black god theology. It has been Aryanized. It has been corrupted the same way Islam is a religion. Islam, born in Arabia, is a religion of the black god. It has been Aryanized. Hinduism started as a religion of the black god but it has been Aryanized and corrupted so the truth of the black god we've documented documented it all over the world so to your point lord jamal i am not offended that someone finds parallels that's what i do is document the parallels the error of mr paul guthrie is this let me read what he says, if I may. The ill logic in the game that he plays. I want to point out for us the game that he is playing. <clears throat> he says, W.D. Farad taught Buddhism, not Islam. Well, what do you mean, Mr. Guthrie, by Buddhism? You say he's a Buddhist, he's not a Muslim. He teaches Buddhism, not Islam. What then is the Buddhism that you say he teaches? Look at what he says. Buddhism is not the worship or the submission to any deity or deities. Buddhism is not chanting. Buddhism is not bowing down to statues. Burning incense or offering bowls of fruit is not Buddhism. Buddhism is not the worship of the Buddha. It has no dogmas. It has no beliefs. Buddhism the name Buddha simply means the wide awake man or woman. Any wide awake man or woman is a Buddha or a Buddhist. Now he just went through eliminating any individual characteristic of a religion called Buddha, Buddhism. It consists of nothing other than being a wide awake man or woman. So you, Brother Lord Jamar, Simply by virtue of being wide awake, by his definition of Buddhism, you are a Buddha. a Buddha. I am a Buddha. You are a Buddha. So he's playing a game. You purge the religion of every single element of the religion and give this 
generic meaning of it. Buddhism is just a wide awake man. And then say, this is proof that Master Fraud Muhammad was a Buddha. Well, yeah, he was awake. So I'm a Buddha. My grandmama was a Buddha. Well, she became wide awake. So that's a game. The, I go further than him, Sister Rod Digger, because my work documents that Buddhism and Hinduism, both of them are articulations of the sacred science of the black God, which means, I promise you, I promise you, that I can demonstrate closer, more substantive, and more relevant parallels between Buddhism and the black God theology of Master Fraud Muhammad more than Mr. Paul Guthrie th does because he does not have anything but a shallow knowledge of Buddhism. I'm really, I'm prepared to demonstrate that. Straight you know what would be a great way to do that? You know what would be a great way to do that, True Islam? What's that? In a debate. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, can I get you to put, listen, bro, brother, I know, I know what you said, but I, I want to make this happen, bro. If I could get you right now to say, because we got to get ready to go, bro. Like this, this, this subject is so deep and enthralling. And first of all, you a master speaker, so you know how to speak. It's and, almost insulting. And, to yeah, like, the time that to, like an hour is not enough for this subject. We we gave him an hour. We gave you an hour. But this is not enough time. Y'all really need to. And, and you say this exchange has been going on since 2004. This is what yo, it's been going 14. on for a while. 14, 2014. Listen, I would like yeah. to, the brother ain't, ain't going to accept nothing less than a debate. Could you please just say you're going to debate him so we could get this uh, going? Yeah. Because I really, yo, you, you both you both have some some strong points and I just want to see it go down. But but not in no WWF, you know, because there's a lot of conscious, you know, wrestling championships going on right now. That's not what I'm looking for. And all of y'all that's into that, y'all get out of here because we're not we're actually trying to do something productive here. We're not striving to, you know, this one first, that one on some, you know, this is not the WWF. But I would like to see this. Y'all, both of y'all go you know what i mean head to head intellectually on this subject because time's just about up what do you say brother can we do that can we join can we have a join debate you on your can we have a debate yes with you and paul Guthrie. Let, 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 let me say this to you uh, to mr paul guthrie uh -huh. y'all got me twisted Dear brother, you didn't have me twisted until just now by asking me what you just asked me. Because you know that um, I stated my position and I am the one who's saying I want to make this happen. Now, your audience needs to be aware of why Mr. Guthrie is making this a sticking point. And you, Lord Jamal, um, you should not be assisting him. In this I, way. I'm not trying to assist him. I'm trying to assist the the I'm trying to facilitate whatever discussion, debate, build, whatever y'all want to so, call it. Yeah. And that and that's the point. So let just let us be real clear. Or let the audience be real clear so they understand who's playing mm -hmm. games here and who mm -hmm. ain't. Um, we stated in, I, in the beginning your position of why you said you can't call it a debate. But but they didn't hear that. They didn't hear the why. My, I believe they did, but it's not real. No, I didn't state it. I didn't state. I, it. I stated it, and and you agreed. I said because you are a part of an organization, you are part of the Nation of Islam, that you can't autonomously just do certain things. And, and See the mistake um, was. That was conveyed to Mr. Guthrie, and he seized on it as an excuse 
to duck out of the debate. I am not, so the audience will know, I am a helper of the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan. You see this edifice I'm in? This ain't my personal home. True indeed. I know where you're at. I don't do me personally. I follow my chain of command, and my chain of command goes up to the Honorable Brother Minister Farrakhan. And when you and I spoke, Brother Lord Jamal, I told you that I want to make this happen. We have to publicize it in a way that will allow it to happen. So the whole point of the language is to craft it in a way so that it can happen. You and your conversation with Mr. Paul Guthrie, you tip your hand, he heard that, and now he is seizing that as, a, as, as an escape, a trap door out of this thing. And so I'm going to say it again. I don't care what Mr. Paul Guthrie calls it. He can call it a debate and he can hear it ringing, ringing in his ears from his own mouth a million times a day. None of you are going to compel me to violate my protocol. I want, I'm the only, I seem to be the only one who's really determined to have this happen. If you want it to happen, Mr. Call, Mr. Mr. Paul Guthrie, just show up. Forget what it's called. We don't have to call it nothing. Just show up. If you want to have it, I'm in, in agreement it. with that. Show up next day. I'm in agreement. I'm just What's listening. And, and I didn't What's ask that? you that to try to disrespect you in any way. I'm just trying to make this go down. You understand, brother? I want to see and you. All that has to one thing that has to happen for it to go down. I show up and he show up. That's the only thing that has to happen. If you <laughs> want it to go down, Mr. Show down. At the school at 3 o'clock at the flagpole? 3 o'clock. I'll, I'll be there. Will we used to meet at the flagpole. It was the flagpole we met at. Meet me at the flagpole after school. That's what that's Translation, what I'm way too powerful to be debating with folks. Just show up and we and we can do this. Hey. I, I feel you, brother. Well, listen. He's playing how games. He's playing games. How can people how can people um get your get your literature, get your books, get more information on these subjects as far as the protocol of the black god and um, you know. Tell us where you might be speaking at or, or you know. Yes, sir. I would like to contact with you. I also like to say I actually prepared some slides. I would like to when we have to conclude here to the live stream audience, I'm going to present a case um, so that it will be out there and I will send it to you. Allow Mr. Paul Guthrie to. Uh, sink his teeth in and hopefully it will inspire him it will compel him to show up at three o'clock next week uh. so after we close here i'm going we're going to continue and we're going to show the people some things the things that we came to show that we didn't get to yet i can be reached um social media wise um at wesley muhammad facebook um, and Dr. Wesley Muhammad Facebook, Wesley Muhammad Instagram, Wesley Muhammad uh, YouTube, um, also at www.drwesleymuhammad.info. That's drwesleymuhammad.info. Every Thursday, uh, more or less, at 4 o'clock, um, you can meet me at Sip and Savor um, in Bronzeville, Georgia, doing the math. We do the math, Lord Jamal, every uh, Thursday at Sip and Savor. Oh, Tune in, um, at, that's nfastudios.com, so I can be reached thereby. Well, yeah. well brother, <sighs> to Islam, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, we thank you so much for having you with us. I wish we had more time. This is such a, an intriguing subject and, you know, yes, man, you are a, 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 a great guest and you are always welcome here on the Godcast. Um, I appreciate you, Lord Jamal. As a legend in the game, Brand Nubians, of course, Brand Nubians was part of the 
of the Islamic food that fed my Islam. True indeed. Each one teach one. Man sharpens man, steel sharpens steel. That's right. But um, yes, so brother, thank you. Thank you to your live stream audience um, thank for you, joining Lord. us. Thank you, everybody that's here on Shindig. Everybody at home at You Know What I Mean Godcast. Once again, another great one. I'm Lord Jamal. I'm Digga Digga. Peace.